Hey everyone, got all my parts here to do the bulletproof uh, transmission build for my Jimmy's 4x4 Wraith. Wanted to go over everything and then I'm going to put it all together and show you what I got. Uh, I showed you this last time. These are the super shafty chromoly 6mm outputs. I'll be This is replacing the stock size uh, Wraith output, which is similar to the length in the rear, but longer in the front, which will... It, It'll allow me to get that output out past the spur gear cover so that I can run the larger MIP outputs without having to do any trimming. They're also much, much stronger than, than those stock ones using the uh, smaller output diameter. Next, I'll be using the super shafty beefy top shaft. This is uh, a shaft I ran all last year, so it'll be going back in, but comparing it to the stock uh, output shaft, you can see it is longer. Um, it's got a much larger thread on the outside there, which is the, to facilitate running a uh, Gen 3 slipper from Robinson Racing. This is off of the Slash. It's a 32 pitch, obviously, for strength, but it also has a slipper back there, which has a much larger surface area with also a greater radius to give you more holding power and adjustability for when you do want that slipper to work. Um, Comparing that to an axial piece, um, it uses a, a single pad design which on a much smaller radius and doesn't have nearly the ability to work as a slipper without just simply locking it all the way down, especially when using a motor such as the Pro 4. So this is a good upgrade for anybody running uh, any brushless motor in a Wraith or uh, AX10, SCX10. It's nice to have that extra adjustability as well as the 32 pitch gear uh, strength. I will be replacing my stock Wraith case with the aluminum SCX10 version. This is the case that I was running forever. Obviously it is much shorter and does have the uh, different bolt pattern on the front, which is specific to the AX10 SCX10. The Wraith actually does have a different bolt pattern, which comes into place when buying a motor plate from Super Shafty. There is both AX10, SCX10, and Wraith gear patterns if you do want to get his ultimate motor plate, which is uh, considerably more beefy than the stock arrangement, which is this. It uses a thin aluminum motor plate with the plastic gear cover that incorporates these spacers. This is a one-piece design that replaces all of that. It's thicker, it's eighth inch, but the biggest improvement is, is that the bolts go through this and then use a nut on the back rather than threading into this motor plate, which is much thinner and very easy to pull the threads out of. So that is the basics of the parts. I will be filling the transmission with new hot racing steel gears. Um, I've already got the steel gear, this is the same as this one, bolted onto uh, my outputs but I will be replacing both the idler gear and the top shaft gear. Um, I was just running a stock top shaft gear, and then I was running a aluminum Robinson Racing idler gear, but I'm going to replace all that this time around. I'll also be using a full new uh, Fast Eddie's bearings bearing kit that uh, Eddie sent me, so I appreciate that. I'm going to get this all put together now, and we'll see how it looks when it comes out in the wash. So. All right, guys, finished up the assembly on the transmission. Everything went together really well. Everything fit really well. Everything is spinning freely, and all the parts feel like they are really meant to hold up now. I don't have to worry about any of these things letting go on those longer G6 type events. The outputs fit great. You can tell it gets me just past that, that spur gear cover with, those, with that extended front output using that beefy 6 millimeter output uh, for the MIP drive shafts. The motor plate was the the biggest addition. You can tell it's got the lock nuts on the back here now. That allows you to really just crank down on that hardware and you can feel like that motor plate's really in place. You don't have to worry about stripping out those tiny, uh, tiny threads on those stock aluminum motor plates. The spur gear cover fits the motor plate really well. It hugs everything like the like I would expect it to on the stock stuff. Uh, I am I'm really happy with all of that. The the MIP drive shafts do need a little bit of greasing in the joints after uh, installing the old shafts onto those new six millimeter hubs. But other than that, everything's ready to go. 
the HR gears seem to be rolling pretty smooth. Uh, I used a heavy duty bearing grease inside. It's just some stuff from the auto parts store. Nothing special there. Uh, but beyond that, it's ready to get bolted into the Jimmy's 4x4 Wraith. I've got the Holmes Hobbies Trailmaster Challenge coming up uh, Saturday, so four days from now. And it's I've got a lot of work to do. Still have to get the transmission installed in there, the new interior put in, and everything wired. So a little bit of work to do still. I'm not going to get the skins done before the event, but that's okay. Just need to get everything else running and operational, so I better get to it. Um, Supershafty.com for all the parts you see here, basically. Or you can just go buy a completed transmission from Rick at Super Shafty. He doesn't really charge anything for assembly. It's just pretty much the price of the uh, of the parts. So unless you have you know half of these parts around already, like I did, just buy, just buy the whole thing from him and save yourself the uh, the time, you know. Or order all the parts yourself and and uh, experience building it like I did. It's you know that's half the fun of these things or more. So. Thanks again, Rick at Super Shafty, Eddie at Fast Eddie Bearings, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, subscribe to the video if you get a, or subscribe to the channel if you get a chance. Also, Harley Designs on Facebook. So we'll see you later, guys.